Hello and welcome back. This video will introduce declarative language. If you're familiar with Prolog, uh, this will be no news to you. Except the example at the end, uh, since it will be Lambda Prolog syntax, not Prolog syntax, and as you will see, they are very close. Although I said earlier that you, will, yeah, that you don't need a Prolog background, which is still true, you do need to be able to turn off your imperative programming brain and open your mind to a new realm of coding. Uh, if you're not familiar with imperative programming either, all the better. But if you are, I must warn you, it's going to be as hard as getting that Kylie Minogue song out of your head. But declarative and imperative programming are very different paradigms. You are used to telling the computer to update such variable with such value and loop in from this bound to that bound. Uh, and sometimes even allocating the memory yourself and really get into the details. And you're about to discover a whole new way of coding, a beautiful way actually. So try to take what you'll see with the fresh mind of a newborn baby. Uh, although I strongly suggest you learn a bit what declarative programming is, at least by reading the Wikipedia page or the Stack Overflow page, or just googling uh, declarative programming and reading around. But if you're too lazy, let me just say a couple of things. If you're used to imperative programming, you know that you have to tell the computer the different steps to arrive at a result. You have to tell it how to do things. Uh, as a set of instructions and loops and functions and, and things like that. In declarative programming, you declare facts to the computer and you give it rules to infer new facts, to, con to construct a new knowledge. Uh, so you tell it the what and the actual steps of the how are left to the compiler to figure out. And this will allow you to write very concise and precise and abstract code that will be easier to read and understand and uh, to maintain. So let's see um, a silly little example. Do not, do not attempt this code at home, not because it's dangerous, but because it will not work. Right now I am hiding information from your unsuspecting beginner's eyes. Um, the example we'll see is the Socrates as a man example, nearly as old as logic itself. This example says that since Socrates is a man, and since all men are mortal, then Socrates must also be mortal. A. Socrates is a man. B. All men are mortal. So we start by introducing the fact that Socrates is a man. So the way to do this, let's comment that out. So in Tejas you use a one line comment with the percent. Uh, the way you do this, you, uh, you, the way you introduce this new fact is but we, what we call a predicate. A predicate will denote a property. We call, it, we call this uh, predicate, for example, is men. So when you say, is man Socrates, uh, think of it as saying Socrates has the property of being a man. Um, so we call what is applied to the predicate here a parameter, much like the parameters and functions. So by doing this and adding a dot, uh, we're saying we declare that Socrates has the property man. Uh, notice that the uh, parameter, the name of Socrates, is just a string between double quotes. The syntax of predicate is a bit different than prologue. In prologue you will write something like this. You put it in parentheses. Uh, in lambda prologue you just put a space. And if you had more than one parameter, you will do first parameter, space, second parameter, space, and so on, and then finish with a dot. Uh, right. So, uh, notice also that the name of the predicate starts with the um, uh, lowercase, but we'll get to that later. So now, our current state of knowledge is that Socrates is a man. Let's add the new rule, the, uh, the rule that says, if all, uh, uh, sorry, the rule that says all men are mortal. Or equivalently, if something is a man, then that something must also be mortal. Since we have a predicate that represents the property of being a man, we're going to use it to represent to represent, sorry, the fact that something is human by saying is man something. Um, so uh, we don't have a property of being mortal, so let's just say that the property of being mortal is is mortal of something. This says that something is mortal. Uh, now getting back to our rule, if is man something, then is mortal something. Uh, in logic you would say 
is man so let's comment this also in logic you will say is man something implies is mortal something um, in lambda prolog as in prolog you will write exactly that but in reverse so instead of saying if is man something then is mortal something we will write is mortal something if is man something so is mortal something if is man something and also finish with a dot this creates the rule that says if you want to prove that something is mortal it will suffice to prove that something is a man um, right so let's go ahead and test that so don't look at what I'm, s I'm saying here uh, you will learn all this uh, later so we are at the top level of Tejas and we're gonna ask it is man Socrates and it's gonna say yes now I'm gonna ask it is mortal Socrates and it's going to say yes because it knows that something is mortal if man if um, something is man and since we're asking it is Socrates mortal it's going to look to see if Socrates is a man and if it is a man then it's going to say yes it's mortal uh, if we ask it, if we asked it is mortal Kenny West it's going to say no so don't panic this doesn't mean that Kenny West is immortal, despite what he may think. It simply means that the computer, based on what we told it, uh, based on its current state of knowledge as facts and rules, is not able to conclude that Kenny West is mortal. Okay, so there you go. That was a quick glimpse uh, at logic programming. During the next videos, we will see incrementally complicated things, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.